Let's test audio. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless everybody. Amen and amen. Welcome to our Sunday school this morning. We are live and we are getting ready to begin our study for the day. Blessings to each and every one of you. We are so glad to be here and to be a part of what the Lord is doing. Welcome. Our study today is on uh, quietness. And I hope that as you're coming on, I'm going to be watching and um, checking and seeing who's there with us. But our lesson today is lesson three from our book entitled, uh, Come Holy Spirit. And I hope you had a chance to at least review our lesson and um, go over the daily readings for, the, um, for today, <clears throat> for the week. And if you did, great, because we'll be uh, doing a few things today that will uh, cover some of those. So God bless everybody, and we'll give you a chance to, um, oh goodness, Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to chat with me. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking for that. So, uh, today we'll be talking from the Song of Solomon, looking at chapter 2, verse 14. So hopefully you're there with us. We're going to share. If you take a moment and just share wherever you are, I'm going to share. And that way, we'll all get a chance to uh, be on the same page and others can join us. Please share with somebody so that they can hear and join us today as we look into the word of the Lord. Uh, as you share, I'm going to share as well. So let's take a moment and just share today's study. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Have you shared already? All right. So, God bless everybody. We are going to get started. And uh, God bless you. I see some people on already. Blessings to everybody. We are, um, I'm struggling to share this morning for some reason. But y'all share and we'll be right back and I'll share a little bit later. I need to share the grace for today, though. Hmm. Y'all bear with me just a second. This is not quite as simple as I thought it should be. So hold on a sec. All right. And there. So hopefully you have your Bibles if you can. If not, just listen to us, and we're going to share from there. And uh, good morning. I see some of you watching. Blessings. All right, let's share there. And then um, bear with me just one more moment. Now, we're cooking with grease. There we go. God bless everybody. Let's get started. All right, good morning. Hey, Sister Heather. Good morning, Sister Kirby. All right, I think I see everybody who's on. Good morning, and thank you all for, sh for sharing and for joining this morning. Let's get started. So today's lesson is lesson three, and we're talking about the qualities and the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. And um, I'll put this here, and I think I can see you all as you all um, comment. So our memory verse today, <coughs> excuse me, is found in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Let's look there. It says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God of great price. Now, I want to just go over this. I know typically when we're in Sunday school growing up, someone would just, we, we would say it again and again until we kind of got it in our spirit. But I want us to look at this, and uh, I want to read it again. And, and actually, I didn't get too far beyond this. But because it began to speak to me about that quietness. There's something about the Holy Spirit that produces a calmness, a quietness in us. Now, if we don't uh, put forth the effort to listen to the Holy Ghost, to be aware of what he's working in us, he doesn't begin to produce that fruit, the character, his nature in us. And I know that the scripture that is used by this particular 
uh, study that we're using. It talks about the baptism uh, uh, of Jesus in water and how the, the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove. And that they're looking at that dove-like quality and how the quietness and the peace and the gentleness, and those are the characteristics that are being discussed in this book. Today is talking about quietness. And we're going to look at this particular passage in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4 in detail. But before we go there, let's look at the NIV first. It says, rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Which is of great worth in God's sight. The lesson aim. It is to highlight the quietness of the dove and the need for spirit-filled believers to exhibit this same quality. The need for spirit-filled believers to exhibit this same quality. Now, I would almost venture to change this just a little bit to the need for spirit-filled believers to uh, exhibit the nature of the Spirit of God. Because that's really what it is, right? It is the nature of the Spirit of God. It's not really a quality versus it is the nature of the Spirit of God that's in us. We must manifest the nature of God, the, of the Spirit of God, because that's what that the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, is the change agent. That is what makes us different. When we get born again, it is the Spirit of God that produces the change in us. <clears throat> right? All right, make sure we get that because that's important. When we get that, we understand. Now let's go back. I want. I need to kind of work on this particular passage in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Now we can certainly go over to the other portions, and I want to look at those, the ones that hopefully you had a chance to look at during the week, um, the, the, the home Bible readings that I shared with you. And before the end of today's lesson, we'll give you the ones for next week so you can get a chance to read those as well, and uh, we'll cover those. But... Um, but I want to go back to this memory verse and look at that just a little bit, okay? It says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. Now, of course, when I read this, the first thing I thought about was, what is the it? What's it? Then we need to go back to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. It says, and I, I, I have a Bible here, and I can read that to you, but if you're home and you have a Bible nearby, let's look at that. I'm going to read that because you need to know what the it is that it's talking about. Because it's saying, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. What's the it? Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's see what that says. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. And it says this, who's adorning? And we can start at the beginning, but it says, Whose adorning let it, the adorning, not be the outward adorning of plaiting of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. So he's saying there's nothing wrong with adorning the external. He says, but I want the most important thing to let the adorning, that thing, and we're going to talk about that word adorning in just a second, because it'll, it'll surprise you what that word actually means. But he's saying, let the adorning, that thing about us, not be just the external, the things that we look to beautify us, but let it be the adorning, verse 4, let the adorning be the hidden man of the heart. We spend, in our society, a lot of time adorning our external. We spend a lot of time being consumed. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, uh, the scripture says, bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So there's nothing wrong with getting our bodies in shape. We should, because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We should certainly want to make sure that our bodies last a long time, as much as we possibly can with what we can do. But we also should be consumed and concerned with what matters most is our eternal life. That which will endure beyond this body. That which will endure beyond this moment. All right? So, here. So, he says, let it, let, but let the adorning be the hidden man 
of the heart. This word adorning, A-D-O-R-N-I-N-G, actually refers to cosmos. Right. It's not what you thought. It's not what I thought either. Cosmos. And it refers to the world. Um, not the world in the sense of, you know, the earth. It does in a sense. But it's referring to order or arrangement. Um, it refers to the arrangement of the stars or how things are arranged. Right? How things are arranged. Um, uh, how they are placed in order. So he's saying your how things are placed in order in your life, the priority should be the hidden man, what people don't see, of your heart. Because that is what is not corruptible. It is not to be destroyed. It is not capable of destruction or deterioration or decaying. That This stuff that we see outside, it will deteriorate. It will decay. It will be destroyed. But he's saying the thing that is hidden in your heart, that part of you that is orderly arranged, that thing that we make priority, that controls everything else, the things that we see in this world were shaped and formed by the things we do not see. That's the scripture. That's the word of God. When we look at that, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God that we do not see. We do not see. We see the written word of God. We see that. But the word of God we set that moves and shapes and forms, that, we, that's spiritual. That is spiritual. And he's saying, what is a priority and paramount is the hidden man of the heart, that which is not corruptible. And that word heart, now let's talk about that for a second. I want to make sure you get that. So he's talking about the adorning, the orderly arrangement of things. The orderly arrangement of things, the priority should be the hidden man of your heart, the part that people don't see, but that part which ought to draw people. The word heart here refers to cardia, K-A-R-D-I-A, -A, cardia, which doesn't just refer to that part, the organ in our body that pumps blood. It refers to our thoughts, our reasoning, our understanding, our will, our judgment, our designs, our affections, our love, our hatred, our fear, our joy. He, it's more than just um, what we think. It is beyond that. It is how we think. It is our reasoning. So he's saying, let it be the hidden man of the heart. And our hearts ought to be conformed, shaped by the word of God. Right? It should be conformed and shaped by the word of God. We spend a lot of time allowing ourselves to be conformed and shaped by something. But it ought to be by the word of God. We should let the word of God dwell in us. What the scriptures say? Richly teaching and admonishing us. We should let the word of God guide us. The entrance of his word produces light. So if we don't have, we don't have the word of God, we're not having light. And that's why many grope around in darkness because they don't have the light of the word. The light that the word of God produces. You wonder why so many people walk around in darkness, why they always have some ideas that are totally illogical. And you think, that's illogical. It makes no sense. But they're walking around in darkness because there is no light. But he's saying, let me get back to my text. I need to stay focused. Here, we need to, we, we get this. It's the hidden man of the heart. That, that reasoning. And it's not about how long you've been saved. It's how much of the word of God is in your life. How much of the word of God you've applied in your life. How much of the word of God is moving in your life and changing that part of you that nobody sees. But they will be attracted to because the word of God is attractive. The word of God is is attractive and it produces a quietness. People may not understand it. 
when you don't always have something to say. But when you do speak, there's something about it. Let's read on. He says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not, is not capable of, of being destroyed, of, of decay, of deteriorating. Even the ornament, here again, we find that word ornament, which he's talking about adorning. An ornament, even when we were, when I was a little girl, and you know little girls, uh, they would always, our mamas and our daddies would always put borets in our hair because they would be in there and they would be what we would call cute. And we would feel like they were just orderly arranged, even though sometimes they would be overdone. It would be orderly arranged in our hair because we would feel beautiful, but it was or it was adorning. It was adorning. Here, he says, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. He says you should be adorned with a meek and quiet spirit. Let's look at those two things. Let me go to this. Which is in the sight of God of great price. So here this word is saying a meek and quiet spirit in the sight of God is valuable. It is very costly. It is expensive. It is precious. What is God saying to us? He values a meek and a quiet spirit. I know it's completely opposite to what we think. We think the louder we are that somehow God gets glory from that. But God, the word of God is saying here, and there's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 10 we're going to read in just a moment. But he's saying that, he says, let it be the hidden man of the heart in which is not corruptible, even the ornament. Be decorated, be adorned with a meek and quiet spirit, which God values. To him it is priceless. It is priceless to have a quiet demeanor. You know that's why the scripture says, tells us to study to be quiet. The NIV says, remember. Exactly. That's good, Sister Heather. Let me read that because that's good. He says, or our, our, our inward beauty, reverence of God, should take precedent over our outward beauty. Keep thy heart with all diligence because from it flows the it. Exactly. Because if we spend so much time on our external, but nothing on the internal, it's like one of the scriptures that says, um, it's like having a, a diamond in a pig snout. It's beautiful, but in a pig snout, it has no, yeah, no. It just doesn't work. We should work on our internal more than we do the external because working on the internal will produce all the external stuff we need. That's why the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all the stuff will be added to us. We don't need to pursue all the other things because this is a great price to God. This matters to God. This is precious to God. The meek and quiet spirit. Being quiet without purpose, you know, just being quiet ain't it. Because if the thing is, that word meekness, I want to give you good definitions of that. Good morning, Sister Trinisa. Here, we want to give a good definition of this word uh, meekness. And it's not the great definition, but it's a good definition. I want to get through this. Here, this word meek, it refers to gentleness. Gentleness. You know, we often think of... Um, these words being interchangeable, but they're not. Because I began wondering, well, Lord, aren't they the same? Aren't they similar? Aren't they the same? They may be similar, but aren't they the same? Could we not use them interchangeably? Thank y'all for sharing when y'all come on. Appreciate that. But they're not. So let's give a definition for the word meek. The word meek is gentleness. It's also one of the characteristics of the spirit. God bless you, Sister Brandy. All right. The word, it is the fruit of the spirit. The word gentleness is great power or strength under control. Because we think of a person being meek, 
uh, we think of them as being weak. It's not true. That person who is meek has great power, great strength. They just know how to control that. A person who has great strength knows when to use their power, when to exert their authority. They don't abuse their authority. The Spirit of God doesn't use the authority that's delegated. That's the word, Sister Heather. Because when the Spirit of God moves, He doesn't move just because uh, somebody's acting all up. Because the thing is, something I learned when I was married was the objective of, of talking about things is for someone to hear you. If a person doesn't hear you, then you've wasted your voice. You've wasted words. The Holy Ghost will convict the world uh, and bring judgment, but it, the Holy Ghost doesn't just blab without purpose. There's part of our study talks about the Holy Ghost, how he will speak when it's time to speak. And that's in your study. You may not have had a chance to read that. But he talks about that. I think I marked it. He says, but he knows when. This was on page uh, 28 in our, in our study. He knows when to speak and when not to speak. He knows when to be quiet. We must master that as well. That's a part of discipline. We must become disciples of Christ. We must know when. That's one of the qualities of having that, uh, that spirit like a dove. Of knowing when to speak. Just because, And David learned that. He learned that, and even in the when we look in the in, in the Psalm, Psalm of the Psalms, and in, in the Songs of Solomon, he said that it was it was boiling inside of me, but I had to learn to hold my peace. There's a time to speak, and, and that was one of the things that was in this in your study. When you look in uh, in Ecclesiastes three seven, it was Thursday's home Bible reading. If you had a chance to look at that, it was a time to rend, a time to sow. Rend means to tear. A time to sow means to gather together. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. There's a time for those things. But as people of God, we must learn to be the disciplined. That's what a disciple is. A disciplined one. And we're all learning. All of us are at different stages in our learning, but we're all learning. We should all be growing. We should all be learning. We should all be learning, learning more. That, that's right. And that was one of our scriptures too, I believe, that we should be, well, it may not have been, but it is a scripture that certainly uh, that I remember from many times, uh, of being quick to hear, uh, quick to, slow to speak, Slow to anger, but quick to hear. We should be quick to hear. We should be slow to speak. Because sometimes speaking before we've allowed the Holy Ghost to, to give us what to say or when to be quiet, we will get ourselves in a world of hurt. So let me get back to this. Stay on point. Here, this word meek, it's talking about having inner strength. Inner strength. Inner strength. Um, it also is not necessarily outward or external toward others. It's not always having to exert that authority. It's knowing when to exert it. It's knowing when to. And that's whether it is in any relationship. The Holy Ghost doesn't just deal with us about being meek in spiritual things. We think of spiritual just with church and with church folk. The Holy Ghost will teach you how to be meek in any relationship, whether that is with uh, a parent and child, husband and wife, uh, employee, employer. He will teach you how to be meek in those dynamics because we are students of the Word of God. We are students who are learning this quietness. Learning, because it's a value to God in any dynamic. It's a value to God in every relationship. Because we are examples of the Lord. We are students of God in every relationship. So don't just minimize this to just church stuff. We tend to do that, church people, we do. But it's a value to, of God uh, uh, to God in every dynamic. Let's remember that. He wants us to use this word of God in every dynamic. So that word meekness, it's having great power and great strength, but it's under control. It's disciplined. It's disciplined. 
So, the word quiet here, and this was interesting to me. The word quiet, it meant, you ready? Keeping one's seat. That was odd to me. It meant peaceable. It also meant undisturbed. It meant undisturbed. And of course it meant tranquil. Sometimes we must learn when to keep our seat. Sometimes when I'm teaching, I feel like I need to get up and walk around. And y'all who watch Grace for the Day will hear me say that. I need to get up and walk around. Because you get so, and when we're dealing with, with situations or people, we will feel like, man, we need, to, we need to get up. We get fired up. And we do that with different dynamics. But here he says, and this can be us getting agitated or getting angry. But he says, we need to keep our seat. To keep our seat. Know when to keep our seat. So he says, I want you to have that, the ornament, I want you to be decorated with, to be crowned with the meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is a great price. Now, remember, you will have an adversary who will always come to make sure he prods you, to make sure that he agitates you, to stir you up, that you will not be able to keep that control, that you will not be able to keep your seat and maintain that discipline and that strength and that authority and that power under, under control. But God will give you grace and he will allow the Holy Spirit to help you. He says here that in the sight of God is a great price. Now, the thing that the Lord spoke to me as I was studying this was this. And I'm going to share this with you. God sees and knows what it costs you to maintain, to adorn yourself with that meek and quiet spirit. Therefore, he values it and you. Because sometimes it requires a lot. And as you're growing with God, many times it will be like David was, that you will have so many thoughts and so many things that you want to address, but you have to learn how to keep your seat. Keep your seat. Hold your peace. And let the Lord do what he does in you. Here, it is learning to be quiet. It is the nature of the believer. It is the nature of the believer to have quietness, to have meekness. Here, let's read on. I want to go to a, a passage here. I, I, and the, because this was just one of those scriptures, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. It's not in your study, but I want you to look there if you have your Bibles handy. Exactly. So, Sister Heather, that's good. Good morning, Pamela Gadsden. He sees our sacrifices to be uh, disciplined. Is that what you said? Yes. He sees that. He wants us because there's a benefit in it. And it's something Jesus said. The enemy cometh and he has nothing in us. Let's learn to be disciplined and followers of Jesus on the back on the at the beginning. Let's not wait till we get in difficult positions. Let's do that now before we get to the valley of the shadow of death, before we get to difficult postures. Let's trust God. Good morning, Rhonda. God bless you. Listen, good morning. So, let's read on a little bit. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. It says this, now, Paul, I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and quietness of Christ, gentleness of Christ. Isn't that interesting? By the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in, in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. He refers to the meekness and gentleness of Christ in this scripture. He tells us, he is, he is encouraging them to look at the meekness and the gentleness of Christ. We are encouraged to look at that same thing and to wear that same clothing of Jesus. And there are some other scriptures I would give you to encourage you to look at those as well. Because that should be our nature to have that same quietness, that same gentleness. Let's look at our text for today from Song of Solomon chapter 2. 
We have a little bit more time. Chapter, a Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 14 was our text for today. I want to cover that just a little bit. He says, O oh my dove, thou art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. For sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Song of Solomon is an interesting book. And here you have him talking about the one that he loves. And looking in, in this passage, the cleft of a rock was a place where something or someone could be hidden. And I want to go, and I know you may not have this passage, but uh, in our books, on, uh, in our, in our e-book, on page 28 and 29, he talks about this. But he talks about the cleft of the rock as a place where you can be hidden, but it's also a place of safety and a place of quiet. It's a place of safety and a place of quiet. It's a secret place. Y'all remember the Winders had that song, a secret place, a place where we could hide until the storm was passed, a place where we could be protected from the storm. Here, you, you see, he's saying, thou art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. He's saying, let me see thy countenance. He wanted to be where his love was. And that's where we should want to be. We should want to be in the safety where, where our love is, where the one who provides our safety, our provision, our, our secret place should be wherever he is. In his presence, we find what we need. He says, let me see your countenance. There is something that he finds peace in, in being and seeing the presence of of the one that he loves. He says also, let me hear your voice. There's something about hearing the voice of the one you love that brings calmness, assurance to our hearts. There, I'm gonna give you some homework this week too. There's something about hearing his voice. He goes on and says, for sweet is thy voice. His voice, the voice of our beloved, brought a calmness to him, to us, to him. He says your countenance is calmly. It means his countenance was lovely to him. Hide me. Let's read a little bit from our text today. Here. Let's look there. He says, um, the cleft of the rock is more than just a break in the rock, a crack or a gap of rock. It is a safe and quiet place. It is a secret place. He says here, it is actually a communion. The end of the Song of Solomon, verses chapter 2, verse 14 says, Let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice. Those uh, who are filled with the Holy Spirit long to get along with God the Father and God the Son. They love to commune with them. They long to hear their voice. They know how to quiet themselves. Now, so they can even hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now, we need to be honest with ourselves. And, you know, I say this often. You need to be honest with yourself if you're not going to be honest with anybody else. Be honest with you. Do you struggle with silence? Do you always have to have noise around? Do you always need to have something going, television, uh, noise from social media. When you're driving, do you always have to have something on? Or are you, are you okay with the silence? Because it can be a trick of the enemy that you never have silence for God to speak to you. Never have a moment where there is quiet. We need to have silence sometimes so we can hear what the Lord is speaking to us. We need to learn, when we were in college, we would always have what we call quiet time. And we do that for our children, because we want them to be quiet. So, But God wants us to learn to have quiet time so that he can commune with us. So that we can have silence and learn to quiet our minds so that we can hear his voice talk to us. Sometimes in our busyness, we can become so accustomed to busyness that we forget how to have silence. 
and allow him to speak to us. We feel odd when there's no noise. We don't know how to enjoy the silence. And there's a part of our lesson called application. But we must learn how to silence the noise, even of our own minds. Silence the noise. There's a scripture that tells us to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We must learn to bring those thoughts in line with the word of God, but also learn how to quiet everything so that we can hear God speak to us. Hear God speak to us. Hear, and that's the scripture Sister Heather quoted earlier, James 1.19, teaches us to be swift to hear and slow to speak. Swift to hear, slow to speak. And sometimes we get so busy, so busy in this world, that we are slow to hear, but quick to speak. And the Lord is saying, listen, let's quiet everything down. Let's be okay with no noise. Allow me to speak to you. Allow me to speak to you. Here, let's read a little bit. It says, this scripture cannot be obeyed if you do not possess this one dove-like quality of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a quiet spirit. Learn to be quiet. Learn to be quiet. Learn how to quiet your spirit so you can hear from the Holy Spirit. Quiet the noise. Somebody type that in the chat. Quiet the noise. Don't be afraid to have quiet. Don't be afraid for it to be silent. When your children, you have little children, especially toddlers, and they're quiet, you get a little concerned. Like, what are they doing back there? You want to make sure everything is all right because they're quiet. They must be doing something they shouldn't be doing. But we must learn to quiet the noise. We must quiet the noise so we can become accustomed to hearing the Lord speak to us. Quiet the noise. Don't be afraid to have quiet. Don't be afraid to commune with God. Sometimes the enemy will make you so busy with being busy. I raised both my hands. I remember those days of being so busy that I just busied God out, that I didn't have time to hear him. Busy doing church work. Busy being busy with everybody else's agenda that I didn't do what Mary did, sit at the feet of Jesus to hear him. If you're going to serve the Lord, you must serve him by sitting at his feet. We must sit at his feet and quiet ourselves. Let's read a little bit. Thank you all for putting that in the chat. According to Ecclesiastes 3, 7, there is a time to keep silence and a time to speak. The New Living Translation says, a time to be quiet and a time to speak up. The times you spend communing with the Lord should be quiet times. They may, be, they may include a time when you speak, but don't you do all the talking. Don't you do all the talking. Quiet yourself and spend some time listening. Spend some time listening. A little bit more. He says, Elijah was a man who had a quiet spirit. This caused him to have an ear to hear what God was saying to him at any given time. He heard God tell him about a drought coming to the land. He also heard God tell him when the drought was over and the rain was coming. And we can look at 1 Kings 19, 10 through, uh, 1, 1 Kings 19, 10 through 12, and it talks about that. And I want to read a little bit of that. But I want us to understand the most important thing that God is speaking to us for this lesson is that we must learn to, to have quietness. We must not be afraid to have quietness. Because the enemy sometimes will tell you it's too quiet. You're not hearing anything and you need to silence that too. Silence that too. Silence that too. Practice being 
quiet. Practice it. Your seasons will change. I remember reading about, and I've said this before when I've ministered, um, oh goodness, I can't think of her name, but what, the mother who had all, I can't think of her name, but she had 10 or 15 kids, and when she would, she would pray, she would put her apron over her head. Her children knew she was praying. It wasn't so much that um, she had a bunch of children and she, she was teaching them how to pray, but also that this was important. We must learn how to have quiet time with the Lord. That is what helps us all to produce more for the kingdom of God. We can never be so absorbed with our busyness that we don't take time to be quiet before him. Here, and we have a little, very little time left. I want to... Um, I want to give you the scriptures for next week. I'm going to put that in the chat. I want to do that, but then I want to spend the last little bit uh, giving you a little homework assignment for next week. Um, I want to do the last thing first, and then I want to go back and have a little time. But I want to give you our, I want to put in here for the, the for next week the, um, oh goodness, let me put that in there so you'll have the lesson for, the study for next week, the lesson four, we'll be talking about purity next week's lesson here is your your bible reading for next week as well as the text for next week you'll have that so you'll be able to study next week home bible realm bible reading plus you'll have the text as well as um, the subject and you'll be able to study that if you get a chance to copy and paste it or do a screenshot so you'll have that for next week's study but let's read a little further and um your homework for next week. I want you to take some time this week, if you can. You should be able to, if it's 10 or 15 minutes, and just study the being quiet. Even if it's taking your Bible and your, your a pen and a pad, and just be quiet before the Lord. Even if it's just spending time when your house is quiet. If it's a little time and allowing the Lord to speak to you. He may give you a song. I've had the Lord wake me up with words to a song. I mean, this, this past Saturday morning, the Lord woke me up giving me two points. And I wrote them down. And I thought, wake up. The Lord's giving you some points. Uh, the first one I wrote down. The second one I wrote down. And I thought, well, Lord, you're going to give me some more points. I don't know what they're to. But I wrote them down because he will begin to deal with us and to speak with us. We don't, may not know the whole picture, but he'll begin to deal with us and help us that we can accomplish the things we should. But God will begin to speak to us in quietness. There's a scripture that tells us in quietness and strength. He will speak to us. He will build us up <clears throat> and he will help us. We have just a little more time. A few more minutes. We're going to pray before we go. But when we look in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 10 through 12, you have the man of God here. And um, he, he says, I'm going to read these verses for you really quickly. And he says, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel forsaken thy covenants, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth, stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent or tore the mountains and break it in pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the earth, the Lord was not in the earthquake and and after the earthquake of fire but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice God will will speak to us he will speak to us there is so much we can learn from what happened here sometimes we expect God to speak in ways that are spectacular beloved let's not put God in a box Let's not put him in a box. More often than not, he speaks in ways that are less spectacular and yet supernatural. God often speaks to us in a small, still voice. This is why we must learn what it means to be still. Saints, I want to encourage you to be still. Learn to be still. Be still and know that he is God. There's a song the Lord gave us some years back. He says, I will speak to you in the nighttime and reveal my secrets to you. Be still and know that I am God. He will reveal himself. He will give us direction. He will order our steps. Don't look for the spectacular. Stop looking for that. 
Just get in his presence and allow him to speak to you the way he speaks to you. Get in his presence with a meek and a quiet spirit and God will reveal to you his plan and his will. We have just another few more moments and I want to um I want to just cover just one word little thing that um that I did not cover and that was just reminding you of this scripture there uh, in James 1:19 where he says wherefore my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath let's be quick to hear in every every venue slow to speak and slow to wrath. Let's not let the enemy push our buttons. This week, let's focus. Let's study to be quiet. Let's spend some time in quietness before the Lord. Let's spend time allowing him to speak into us and to build us up and reveal his plans and his will for us. Next week, I want to remind you that we will be covering um, the study on purity. I believe it will be a blessing to you. And I will be again be looking at Song of Solomon. And I believe that as you look into that, that the Lord will speak to you. Our time is almost gone. I want to pray with you. And I pray that you've shared this already. God bless everybody. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word and thank you for pouring into us. I pray for your sons and daughters and that your word would resonate within us and that you'll remind us during this week that you are the mighty God and that in quietness and strength you'll renew us and that you will strengthen us with might and with power and that you value a meek and a quiet spirit. You value it and that it is precious. Help us to adorn ourselves with it. And that we will not be afraid and that we will trust you even more. We thank you for these things even now. We receive it done in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. We decree and declare that it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everybody. We hope to see you all on next Sunday morning at 9 a.m for another time in Sunday school. Don't forget, do your homework, spend some time with the Lord in prayer, as well as do the home Bible readings, and don't forget to prepare and invite somebody to join you for our time in Sunday school. Until then, we will hope to see you then. Well, of course, Sunday, our morning worship will begin at 10 a.m. Stay tuned and join us then if you're not joining your own Sunday, Sunday morning worship. Until then, we'll see you at 10 a.m. right here at Tabernacle of Prayer. God bless you.